Hey, it's Becky. Welcome to the new teardown series on my channel, where I'll take apart gadgets and share what I find inside. First up is the Pavlock, a shocking wearable designed to help you break bad habits. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to see this series come back to life. The Pavlock comes with the main device itself, as well as two silicone wristbands. The Pavlock pairs over Bluetooth with your phone to control the settings through an app, which is also designed to keep you motivated to use the device in the most effective way possible, because there is a method. You can deliver an electric shock to yourself via the app or by pressing the top of the device. It can also supposedly detect when you move your hand to your mouth, say during smoking or nail biting, which are two of the habits it's designed to help break. There it is, okay, Pavlock widget. Ooh, it's big widget, okay. Uh, it has a plus and a minus for 50%, I think that's vibration. Ow, oh, I think I did it at 50%. <laughs> Okay, so I really don't want to, but I feel like I have an obligation to crank it up as high as I can tolerate uh, for the sake of the lulls. So 20 is what I had been doing, which is unpleasant enough as it is. Let's try 30. Uh, 40. Ow! I like, felt like it moves my finger a little bit at 40. 50. Yeah, like really, I can see it like... Uh, contracting one of the muscles in my hand. Like, how can that be good? Okay. Um, 60. Ah. Did you see it moving my, my hand? Ready? 70. Ah. It's not that bad, I guess. Once I'm getting, now that I'm getting used to it over and over in, in a row, 80%. Oh, do you see it moving my hand? A little. Yeah, 90%. Stings. Okay, 100%. Ow! Okay, never again. Thank you. I think this is a great concept, and it seems to work great for those who stick to it. But this isn't a review, and I only tried out the different shock settings to see what they were like. I didn't like the feeling one bit, which I think is 100% the point. Uh, but if I were trying to quit smoking or nail biting, I think I'd be more interested in trying it for real because it, it can sort of uh, act on your behalf. I couldn't bring myself to use it for snacking or teeth grinding, two of the habits I personally would like to stop because I'd have to shock myself every time and also notice with regards to the teeth grinding. Personally, I am more into positive reinforcement than negative, but who knows, maybe in the future all smartwatches will come with this feature, zapping you when you're late on your bills or something. Magnavolt, the final word in auto security. No embarrassing alarm noise, no need to trouble the police. And it won't even run down your battery. Magnavolt. Lethal response. Anyway, let's take it apart. I started cutting the plastic around the little metal nubs. The tricky thing about taking this thing apart, at least before the batteries died, is that it's easy to shock yourself while holding it in place. It's so small, one of the only flat surfaces by which to grip it is also the activation button. So I had to use the phone to make sure it was on a low setting and try to avoid pinching it while cracking open the plastic. After mangling the plastic near the nubs, one of the metal pieces came right out, exposing the circuit board inside. This enclosure design is pretty neat. The electrodes are also the case, which makes for a straightforward three-piece design. I was also able to put this one back together again, which is a rare occurrence in one of my teardowns. There's some interesting hardware crammed onto this board, so let's talk to my friend David, an electrical engineer, about the design of the circuit. Hi. 
<laughs> okay, so David and I already looked at the board. We took some really high resolution photos in order to be able to read all of the chips and we looked up some data sheets. So we already know a little bit about what's going on. We have his microscope and my phone hooked up so that you can see what we're looking at um, on the screen at the same time. Follow along at home. Yeah. You can see right here this, this QFN package labeled N52832. That is a Nordic semiconductor N52 series, which is a really awesome system on a chip, actually. It's got a Cortex-M4 with an integrated floating point unit, which if you think about where things were just a couple years ago, that's an insane amount of power to have in a package that costs just a couple dollars. Also, this also does the control of the wireless radio and the Bluetooth system. So that makes these chips really, really popular for a lot of IoT devices you see these days. Because most things are just Bluetooth radio with a microcontroller and sensor anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this, this is pretty similar, although it has some special stuff for the high voltage section. Mm, yeah, we'll get to that soon. But yeah, it's pretty cool because you can see the chip is here, and then you've got the programming connector here. Whoever designed this has good taste because I like this. This is, called a, uh, this is called a tag connect programming header. Some of you out there who are familiar with Arduinos um, might be familiar with that, that six pin header. The ISP header. The ISP header. But what's nice about this one is that you don't actually have to solder on a connector for it. You can buy this little cable called a tag connect that has pogo pins. And so when you're doing your manufacturing, you don't have to put that same connector on every time. You just plug it straight on. Mm. And then also close to the microcontroller, we have this. This is actually a chip antenna. I've never seen one of these, or, or if I have, I haven't known what it is when I've seen it. Yeah, because it's just a small surface mount package, but this actually is a fairly sophisticated component that, that wraps up something you might see printed in a much larger form factor on a circuit board. And the way you can tell what these are, I just know what these are because I've worked with them before. I recognize the little um, marking for this pin here. But you can see there's a cutout in the ground plane mm -hmm. of the circuit board around the antenna to allow it to shape the electromagnetic field properly so it can have good communication with your phone. Oh, that makes sense. Cool. Well, that's such a small area compared to like that little squiggle antenna you see on like the ESP8266 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, advanced electromagnetics are freaking crazy things. Right. <laughs> that's cool. And it's in the middle of the board, right, which is over the plastic part of the enclosure, not the metal part uh, of the no, enclosure. No, it's on the edge of the board. It's on the, it's on the edge of the board, but it's on the edge of the board in the middle where it's uh, covered by the plastic part of the enclosure, not the metal part of the enclosure. Yeah, they probably spent a lot of time getting this right, because when you're developing a new device which needs to communicate wirelessly, every single thing from the position of the battery to where the ground plane on the circuit board is to what's going on with the enclosure to how people are going to even wear it on their body has something to do with how those electromagnetic fields can get out. So, so this looks really simple, but it actually probably represents a whole lot of somebody's really, really hard work. Yeah, good job. RF engineer. Good job, RF engineers. <laughs> Let's talk about the um, the sensors that we found. Oh, yeah. So we found two sensors. I'm not sure why, um, but it looks like there's they're actually using separate chips. I know this, that little one is the accelerometer. This guy right here, uh, we looked it up. It's an accelerometer. This is actually a gyro. Um, they're both by Freescale. You can tell from the, the 263 manufacturer's code. Not all manufacturer. We were trying to find other chips by manufacturer codes, and like Freescale publishes, they say, this is our manufacturer code, which yeah. makes it really easy to identify their chips, but not everybody does that. So yeah, thanks, able... thanks, Freescale. But <laughs> what uh, could you speculate about why they're two different chips? I mean, they're both from Freescale, which means that if you're buying in bulk from them, you have a deal going on, and, but they do make integrated yeah, gyro often, accelerometers. You can often find... IMUs which integrate both the functionality of the accelerometer and the gyroscope. And so this design um, has them as separate packages. Feel free to shout out in the comments below as to why you think this might be. I mean, maybe they were just prototyping with two separate systems and it was easier to develop for that way. Maybe the prices at volume turned out that it was actually cheaper to get these. They might have I don't already really have know. them around. Yeah, because yeah. the newer chip, the newer integrated ones maybe are slightly more expensive or harder to come by. Maybe Freescale had a bunch of these. Yeah, and, and they it got could them be like more complicated to manufacture the MEMS that are inside of it. I mean, uh, the space is obviously at a premium on this circuit board, but that accelerometer is not super huge. So if they did have the real estate, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it doesn't really matter, does it? Just put it down there. Yeah. And then let's see. Here we've got the uh, you know the button that actually makes it work. So you can press, press the button, the button. Right here. Yeah, yeah oh, these, nice. these little tiny little dudes there. Uh, this is a speaker. You can see it has a little hole to allow the, the sound waves to come out there. It does make a beep when um, it can, anyway, make a beep. 
Um, these chips down here, ah. we weren't able to identify, but you can see they're very close. I'll flip this over. You can see they're very close to the USB plug. And you can see the battery goes directly into this capacitor here. So I believe that this section down here is probably the, the power conditioning and battery charging circuitry. Mm -hmm. And then this part right here is also interesting. This is what generates the high voltage. You mm -hmm. can see that the components on this part are much, much larger than the rest of the board. Right, like those are capacitors, but they're like the biggest surface mount capacitors I've ever seen. Yeah, they're real big. And also they have this, there's this nice big uh, fancy coil craft inductor on the back side. Is that a brand name? That is a brand name. As a company they, they that make, makes inductors? They make really good inductors. Mm -hmm. They're called coil craft. Please give me free inductors. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I'm guessing that it's some kind of LC resonator, um, which will ring up between this inductor and these capacitors to generate the high voltage with zaps you. Um, adjustably zapping. Adjustably zapping. We have it on a really low setting right now. Adjustable zapping. Yes, yeah. it's very important. It's, it's of the future. And then, you know, these over here, These this is what actually couples into the enclosure that you wear around your wrist. So, so it like presses outwards There's against the metal, right? That part, that little clip yeah, like this presses. Little and then... Spring. I don't see anything that sticks out of the metal, so it's got to like extend right to the edge of the circuit yeah, board, right? Yeah, it's kind of like... Off the end. I'll turn it sideways here. It's kind of like springy a little bit. Yeah. Oh, cool. So you press it on there. So that's neat. There's no... It's not glued to the enclosure. It just... I mean, it shouldn't be glued anyway to be conductive. Yep. Neat. Um, What's on the other... So we got the button the and the LEDs. Side, well, it's mostly empty because we need to have the battery. this battery here. But there's like a um, there's a little vibration motor. I was surprised oh yeah, to see that it was cute. such a big one instead of like a or instead of a little flat can. I was surprised to see the long kind. Yeah, and these work for those of you who haven't seen these before. These are also fun. It has this it has this like asymmetric weight on the end of it. Yeah. So when it spins, eccentric it, mass. Yeah, the eccentric mass. Yeah, I've been called worse. But <laughs> it generates the buzz that you can feel. Yeah, that's they're so cool. tiny. Look at how I small know. it is. That's, well, like, that's my finger. So the only things on the back of the board are the where the battery connects, the USB port, the oh. inductor. Yeah. I'll I'll show the photo of the whole back of the board yeah, too. Yeah. That's kind of it, right? Vibrating motor, USB inductor, battery. There's nothing yeah. else on and the back some, of the board. Like, there's some like some test some points or something. Test points, I think. On some little, I don't know what those guys are, but oh, there's, there are some components back here. Those are like little resistors or something, right? Yeah, they could be. Didn't you like think this could be a four-layer board? What would I think you know? Can, I am guessing that this is a four-layer board because you can see, well, first of all, look, everything is packed really, really, really close together. And so, so the board, you mean that the traces then have have to have room to be underground because the components are so tight? That yeah, exactly. That's something they generally do. Uh-huh. And you can also, if you look around, you can also see that there are some vias that don't seem to have any wires going to them. Mm. Okay, well, is that all we can learn with the microscope? Uh, I think so for now. I wish I knew what some of these other components were. I know, we, we looked for a long time for those little guys, and they, we couldn't um, we couldn't find anything on the one that's on screen right now. Yeah, or... I think this one's really interesting because it has its own... Clock. Crystal resonator. Yeah. yeah, its own clock off to the side, which is like, why is it that? Is it is it another microcontroller or something? I don't know. Mm. Can so you read the letters off? We'll, we'll have our readers help us out. Yeah. 063A0131830. So, I mean, usually one of these is a manufacturer's code and one of them is a date code and one of them is a part number. Um, but we did a lot of searching and we didn't see anything, anything about it. Yeah. But anyway, all right, well, uh, let's look at it some more. Okay, let's switch to this oscilloscope. Yeah, uh, so I've, I've got this probe hooked into channel two because I know this could be high voltage. I don't think it's going to break the input to my scope, but if it does, I'd rather it break channel two than channel one. <laughs> Pro tip, when you're doing Pro risky tip. things, don't use your don't use channel one. Your channel one. Uh, yeah, don't use your... Okay, so I made some even smaller probe wires mm -hmm. that attach to the probe here and setting up the scope. So I'm going to probe the capacitors here. Okay, so this is going to be like 10% on the caps. Ready? Boom. Swoop. Ah, and so you can see that little dude there. That's 50 volts per div. Let's grab one more of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So you see, you can see it ringing up there. See, it's like starting slow in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but you can kind of see the the waves there, and we can measure. Let's so just how many look, volts let's is look that at one? that pulse. So let's go. Let's measure. Let's go peak to peak. Channel two. Actually, no. Sorry. Oh, cursors. Cursor one goes there. So at its maximum point, that's like a 65 volt back and forth. Let's turn up this. Maybe turn it up to like 50 percent. Okay. That, so that was 10%. I'm at, now I'm at 50%. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Ready? Okay, do it. Woo! Yeah, you see that one's a lot bigger. That looks taller. So does that mean um, it's higher voltage? But we're not measuring the probes right now. We're just measuring the capacitors, right? Yes, but the capacitors and the inductors work together to generate mm. the, the energy that's going to go out. So now if I go back to my cursors, let's look at that. So that's at 50% now, and you can see that's like a 258-volt signal, peak-to-peak. Yeah. Peak. It might be higher than that because it it's looking like it might be clipping a little bit at the bottoms and on the sides. But and your I don't, scope has a max 300 volts. My scope has a max 300 volts. I don't have a high-voltage probe that works with this scope. And there might be a couple of other things going on, but, but you can get an idea of, of what the signal looks like and how yeah. it changes between. That's cool. And so why does it taper off like that at the end? Uh, because it has to ring down again. Let's probe the the actual shocking points. Yeah, let's probe the shocking. All right, points. are you ready? I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna crank it back down to thirty. Just because sure. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. Ready? Ready. Okay, so you see here, it's interesting because it's not an AC signal anymore. It's just jumping up there to one hundred. Again. Oh, it's really long. Okay. Cool. 25 milliseconds per tiv. All right, go. Yeah. I bet those are not continuous with each other. It could be like ringing up in one capacitor and then charging up the other capacitor. So like when I so this is ground here, and then when I measure here on this capacitor, it shows this like AC ring up situation. Mm -hmm. But when I probe ground here and probe this capacitor here, it just charges and then it discharges. So if I actually make that really small, and it charges and discharges here. So that is definitely a hint. Yeah, really nicely integrated. Nice to see. Cool, thank you, David. Yes, thanks, Becky. Let's do the outro. So what gadget should I take apart next? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, David, for helping. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads. Smash that like button. Am I such a weenie? Well, whatever. The battery life will last better yeah. for me then. Yeah, yeah.